May of 2021 is when we first started documenting our mortgage payoff journey online. We started on Instagram and that was about eight months after we had closed on our house. And one thing I could have never guessed with documenting our journey online is the amount of backlash that we would get for trying to pay off our house and become mortgage free before I'm 30. I never would have thought it was such a bad thing and that it would upset so many people. Granted, don't get me wrong, the overwhelming majority of it is all positive comments and I love that and I really appreciate it. But I do think a lot of things need to be talked about more as far as for one, debunking a lot of the stuff that's just not accurate, like it's just fake news. And then on top of that, just let people live their life. Like just let people live their life. Let's start with the most common comment that we get that has merit and it's valid but again let people live their life not everyone wants to live their life in such a calculated manner not everyone's looking to get rich in this life and be ultra wealthy some people just want security and they want zero chance of bankruptcy zero debt and yes whether you think a mortgage is good debt or bad debt it's still debt at the end of the day I would love to have no mortgage payment, period. Like just nothing. Like I don't have to pay a mortgage for the foreseeable future. Not only is it something that you get charged interest on top of what you owe, like it's not just like an electric bill or a phone bill where that's just it. There's interest on top of that. So if I want to save a ton of money, let me do that. And I get the investing standpoint. Sure. If you run the numbers, if you were to just completely put as much money into the stock market as you humanly can, you would most likely end up with more money than you would have saved with paying your interest early. And that's totally valid. I can say with 100% certainty that if we were not sending this $4,600 a month to our mortgage with the extra amount being at least $3,500, I'm not putting that money into investing. Like I'm not sending $3,500 per month to the S&P 500 and I'm not busting my butt for five years for investing. Now, if that's something that you do, that's very admirable and that's amazing and I love that for you, but it's just not something that I'm really getting excited about to the point that I'm going to have that motivation to do that. I mean, I guess I should revisit that conversation after our house is paid off next year and then we start investing a lot more. Maybe I'll get excited about seeing our investing go up and up, but that's not money I'm accessing until retirement. I'm not using that money for years, for decades. Now, I don't want anyone to get me wrong. I understand the importance of investing. We actively invest. I invest every time to our Roth 401k. Like we're investing. And actually at the beginning of 2025, our plan is to open a Roth, our first Roth IRA and begin for that process. But money is very tight right now. So I just don't really see the point of opening one right now. I understand the importance of it, but I guess it's just more so the standpoint of telling someone that you are putting yourself so far behind if you choose to eliminate so much debt. I'm choosing the mortgage every time and that's okay if you have one definition of financial freedom and I have a different one. That doesn't mean that either of us is wrong. We can both just have different paths to financial freedom. Another comment that we get that is very similar to this in a way, just ultimately deciding that we're using our funds in the wrong way is leveraging debt. I would rather have that money going towards a rental property. Like I could be saving up for a rental property and making that money work for me in different ways. I can make it so my tenants are paying my rent, blah, 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 blah. But at the end of the day, you're still creating more debt for yourself. We want to be debt free fully and that's okay. Nothing is wrong with wanting to be fully debt free. Everything is not a get out of jail free card. Everything is not a get rich quick scheme. Everyone is not so calculated. Some people are just simple living their simple little lives and that's perfectly fine if I don't want to be a landlord. Like a lot of times people find that that's what's wrong with society. They can't find houses or they have to be in some type of bidding war because there's so many landlords out there or investment companies snatching up all the houses. Like I'm fine with just paying off my own house and then just sitting here and just hanging out. I don't have to have a whole bunch of responsibility, let alone the fact that we have two small kids and then we have full-time jobs. Luckily right now I'm on a leave of absence, but here by the end of the month, I'm going to be back working and that is two full-time jobs within itself, having two kids and then having a full-time job and then not mentioning, not to mention everything outside of that. Like what about the necessities I have, like going to the dentist, going to the doctor, going to this appointment, going to that appointment, calling Spectrum so I can inquire about you raising my bill, all of these different things. Like what if I have to like just do life 
And then on top of that, I have to be a landlord. That's way too much for me. So if someone says, hey, I want to pay off my mortgage and you say, hey, I want to just have a bunch of rental properties, that's amazing. I'm not saying that we would never want to do something like that because we very well may someday. But right now in this phase of my, my, my life that I'm in, I don't want to do that. And there's nothing wrong with that. By the way, your interest rate is 3%. Don't you know a high yield savings account, you can get like 5%? Shouldn't you just be putting the money in a high yield savings account, getting 5% interest instead? What if I didn't? What if we're getting to the point now that high yield savings accounts, interest rates are more so in the 4 point, mid 4%, mid 4.2, things like that? Is it really worth me saying, okay, let me stop? and put this money in a high yield savings account instead. Now, some people, you know, they are a little bit more calculated and they would rather keep their money in the high yield savings account for a month or two and then put a lump sum, whatever floats your boat. Me personally, I wanna see that payment going down every single paycheck and seeing the interest that I'm getting charged every month go down every single month. That's me. I don't want to put it in a high yield savings account. It's just very calculated. You'll notice a theme with me. I like to keep it simple. I don't want to have to be so calculated with everything I do. Now, don't get me wrong. I am very much a high yield savings account girly. I love a good high yield savings account. Absolutely, you should have a high yield savings account instead of a traditional one because Chase will give you a penny in interest and they will just call it a day, whereas you could be getting much, much more than that. Absolutely, we have money in savings, we have an emergency fund, we have sinking funds, we utilize it. But to then say, okay, I'm not going to put this money on my mortgage every month and I'm going to put it in the high yield savings account, I just think there's bigger fish to fry. I just think that sometimes we try to do so many things to try to make the best possible outcome. But sometimes you could just put the money towards the mortgage. Like you just don't have to. Don't get me wrong. If you're someone who just loves to hold on and hoard cash, there's nothing wrong with however you feel it, feel it to be fit. But me, I'm not going to comment on someone's stuff and say, you need to put that money in a high savings account. That's dumb. You could actually just be getting more money and in interest. Just zip it. But wait, if this isn't your forever home, why would you be paying it off early? Is this your forever home? Are you sure you're going to be here forever? Why does it have to be my forever home in order for me to pay my mortgage off early or pay extra towards the principal? Mathematically, if I bring my overall principal balance down an extra $50,000 in the five years that I was there, and then once it's time to move and I sell, aren't you profiting 50K-ish more? than you would have if you had not put it towards the mortgage. Like I just, that concept, I just don't understand along with a lot of other concepts. But why is it just because it's not your forever home means that you can't put extra towards it and save thousands of dollars in interest. And even though it's not your forever home, doesn't mean you can't put $100, $200 on in a month and just save thousands of dollars. Like it's okay. (laughs) Nothing tops the fact that there are some people who truly believe that your mortgage balance is paid in full as as soon as you close and like you sign the application or what have you. I refer to them as sovereign citizens because that's what they are basically. I watch the body cam footage on YouTube where every now and then there's a sovereign citizen who thinks that rules don't apply to them, they don't have to have their driver's license, and all these things. And there's some people who tell me that I'm a fool for paying back my mortgage because your mortgage balance is already paid in full and you don't have to pay it. And if that's the case, as my husband made me aware of, if that was actually the case, why don't you have 10 houses? Why don't you have 10 rental properties that you're collecting rent on? Because the mortgage was paid in full when you signed the application, right? Or it was paid in full whenever you close because it's all set. So why aren't you taking full advantage? Why aren't you a millionaire? Show me the proof. Somebody, please, if you're watching this and you're someone who believes this, please show me the proof. Like send it to me and DM me on Instagram. I have yet to have anybody show me the proof of their house mortgage being paid at full and they're not paying a mortgage payment every month. They're going to take your house. They're, they're going to take it from you. If you don't pay it back, they're going to take it from you. The lender paid the seller now you have to pay the lender that's how that works and if you think otherwise just show me the proof please now earlier this year someone also told me that i have to keep a mortgage on my home because if someone sues me and they put a lien on my home they can't take it if i have a mortgage that's not true i actually looked it up and i'm going to try to include the screenshot home is getting taken regardless if someone sues you or not just god forbid that happens to anybody but 
It's not that there's a mortgage saves you from anything. A mortgage doesn't save you. I've also heard people say, oh, you need to keep some type of loan going. Like even if you pay off your mortgage, get a HELOC because at least there's something out there that's holding the title to your home. Like that doesn't protect me. That's not protecting me. Regardless, my understanding is that your home getting taken in a situation like that is a little bit more rare. Someone who's an expert will have to let me know if that's true or not. Another thing that I'm told sometimes is that, well, you'll never own your home anyway. You're paying off your mortgage, but you're never gonna own it because you always have to pay property taxes. I mean, property taxes are to maintain the roads, your city, things like that. But people feel like if it's the case that if you don't pay your property taxes and your home could just be taken from you due to that, someone could buy it from right underneath you do that, or it just being taken altogether, then you never really own it, right? I mean, let me know what you guys think about that. I feel like I can understand the mindset overall, but to say that it, you never really own it when your name is on the deed and just like if you don't pay your car registration, you can't drive that vehicle legally. Like, does that mean you never really own your car? Does that mean anything that you ever have to pay to ultimately maintain, like it's never really yours? So it can be used in multiple scenarios. And at the end of the day, I don't think many people are going to willingly let property taxes be the factor that you can no longer own your home. If anyone's ever been in that type of situation or close to that situation, definitely let me know. I just feel like obviously anyone could fall in hard times, but if it's something that the only thing standing in between me owning my home and me losing that home over property taxes, people are going to do a lot of different things to come up with that money. So I just don't feel like anytime someone says that, it has to be jealousy. It has to be them being insecure about their own situation. What other reason would you say that? I feel that it's never a homeowner that says something like that because if you truly felt that way, why do you own a home? And so it has to just be jealousy that you don't have a home or projection. I mean, let me know what you guys think about that because truly I just, I need to understand more on where it's coming from. Now we are truly saving the best for last with this video and this is my favorite thing when people say, why would you pay off your house because you're losing the tax write-off? the tax write-off you mean to pay ten dollars to get three dollars back you mean the same tax write-off that you do not get unless you itemize your taxes which majority the vast majority of americans do not itemize their taxes because the standard deduction is very very high it's like for someone to tell me that you should not pay off your house because you're losing the tax write-off it's just ignorance. You need to educate yourself on how things actually work because it has been many, many years since we have been able to claim interest. It's been since we were paying on the student loans, which we paid them off back in 2019. So it was for the 2018 tax year, tax laws changed here recently. It was something where we have not been able to claim mortgage interest from our house ever because since we've lived here, that tax law has been in effect Educate yourself, please, before you tell someone, don't pay off your house because of this, make sure it makes sense because at the end of the day, just because you are paying an extra $100 to $200, even $300, it doesn't take much for you to save hundreds of thousands of dollars in interest. At the end of the day, let people live their life. If they want to pay off their house early, fine. If they want to, if they want to wear their shoes on the wrong feet, let them do it. If they like drinking Dr. Pepper and it brings them joy, don't tell them anything about it. Let people live their life. That's the problem. Everyone always wants to say, you need to be doing this. You need to be doing that. But at the end of the day, everyone just needs to live their own life and do what makes them happy. But if you are someone who wants to pay off your mortgage early or pay a little bit extra to the principal and just save maybe five figures, of interest it's totally doable it doesn't take a ton of money to get there if you can squeeze a little bit out of your budget it's not as hard as you might think now did you know if you got a four hundred thousand dollar mortgage loan five years ago and let's say you had a six percent interest rate on a 30-year loan you're paying four hundred and sixty three thousand dollars in interest alone meaning that four hundred thousand dollar loan term turned into eight hundred and sixty three thousand at the end of 30 years if you decided to pay bi-weekly payments instead of paying your mortgage payment so basically cutting your mortgage payment in half paying half of your full mortgage payment every two weeks that would save you over sixty-one thousand dollars in interest and that would pay off your house three years and ten months earlier with those specific numbers 
if you were able to push out $300 per month instead of just paying the minimum payment, so sending an extra $300 towards principal monthly, that would save you $86,000 in interest and that would pay off your house five years and five months earlier. Just to let someone know who did not know this because I know a lot of people think that it takes a lot. But at the end of the day, even $50 a month is still paying your house off sooner than you were originally scheduled to do so. 30 years is a long time, y'all. What could you do with $86,000? And let me know in the comments.